that. Tomorrow night is Thirsty Theology. We'll be meeting at the Acropolis Restaurant over on Pelham Road. Everybody is welcome to join us for that. Next Saturday, Jan Hottinga's memorial service will be held in the sanctuary at 11 with a reception to follow afterwards in the fellowship hall. Everybody is welcome. And if you have a favorite story of Jan, there will be a time of storytelling during the reception. So you could be thinking about that this week. Finally, next Sunday is our Senior Recognition Sunday. If you have a graduating senior in your family and you would like their name to be included in the bulletin, call the office this week so we can print their name. There are lots of other things happening. That's the short of it today. We can set the busyness aside now and turn our attention fully to God. If you would, take a deep breath in and breathe out. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. We give thanks to God, the Creator, for putting life and breath in our bodies this day and calling us to worship together. We give thanks for God, the Spirit, who binds our many breaths into one breath, singing praise and offering prayers today in worship. We give thanks for Jesus Christ, who with his own breath prayed for us, walked with us, and healed us. So then, with our breath in this space, with these people, let us worship God.
Let us make God known. Lord, we come to worship you and you. Let us make God known. Let us make God known. Let us make God known. as we continue our worship with a time of confession. The font represents a brilliant place to turn from ignorance to repentance to recognize God's abundant love everywhere. Today we will talk a lot about what it is to be known and help others know God. We seek to build a world where invisible things are visible. So, as you see the waters poured, as you hear the echoes of each splash, think about the abundant mercies of God, which are greater than anything we can fathom or imagine. Come to the font honest, open, willing to turn. Let us pray. Forgive me, Lord. My actions often hide you instead of revealing you. Through your word, you call me to shine with the light of Christ. Yet too often, I hide that light. I struggle to testify to the mighty works you have done. I willingly participate in a culture that worships the idols of fame, power, and wealth more than we worship you. Forgive me and return my attention 
to where it needs to be. Listen to grace. In the waters, see God's love. Sisters and brothers, hear the truth, experience the good news, repent and believe, for in Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has found be seated. As we turn to God's word, let us turn to God in prayer. Holy one, holy three, You have made each of us and made all of us as part of your good creation. You have claimed each of us and loved all of us as your children. You have given each of us and given all of us your word to live by, your word that saves us. Now, as we turn to your word, open our ears to the living word, Jesus Christ, and to the promises he gave his disciples. Amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter 17, beginning in the 22nd verse. Listen now for the word of God to the people of God. Paul stood up in the middle of the council on Mars Hill and said, People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. As I was walking through town and carefully observing your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. What you worship as unknown, I now proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it is Lord of heaven and earth. He doesn't live in temples made with human hands, nor is God served by human hands as though he needed something, since he is the one who gives life, breath, and everything else. From one person, God created every human nation to live on the whole earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their lands. God made the nations so they would seek him, perhaps even reach out to him and find him. In fact, God isn't far away from any of us. In God we live, move, and exist. As some of your own poets said, we are God's offspring. Therefore, as God's offspring, we have no need to imagine that the divine being is like a gold, silver, or stone image made by human skill and thought. God overlooks ignorance of these things in times past, 
but now directs everyone everywhere to change their hearts and lives. This is because God has set a day when he intends to judge the world justly by a man he has appointed. God has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This ends the first reading. Now let me invite any children who are here today to come forward, and um, if you have an offering for the Mother's Day offering, you may bring that and add it to our jar. Got it, John. Squeeze in. You guys can squeeze together. Squeeze together, Margo. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Got a quarter? You can squeeze in over there. I know you can. So today, for some of you, you may be celebrating a special day in your family. What is the name of that special day? Mother's Day. And why do you celebrate your mothers? Why? Because they're special. Okay. Why else might you celebrate your mother? Why? Because you love your mothers or your mothers love you? Your mothers love you and you love your mothers. Good answer. (laughs) Why do you celebrate your mothers? Because they take care of you. Okay. So do you know how mothers get their job? Do you know who gave moms their job? Nathan's looking at his mom like, I don't know. (laughs) Who did give her that job? Who gave you the mom your job? God gave your mom her job. And so I'm going to read you part of a book. This is Mem Fox, whoever you are. I wanted to use some of the pictures in here. We're just going to read a few pages of it. So God is sort of like the mom of the whole world. And God worries about when you're sick. And God worries about when you fight with your brothers and sisters. And God worries about how our whole family is going to get along. So I'm going to show you some pictures of some people who look different, but are still part of God's family. It says, little one, whoever you are, wherever you are, there are little ones like you all over the world. Can you see some people who are different in this picture? Show me some people who look different. What do you see, Charlie? You see somebody with yellow hair. And find somebody who doesn't have yellow hair. Can you find somebody who doesn't have yellow hair? Yeah, there are several over there. So see that there are people in God's family live all over the world, and they don't all look alike. Their skin may be very different from yours, and their homes may be different from yours. Do you see how there are different homes in these pictures and different color skin? Their schools may be different from yours. Does anybody go to a school that looks like this? No, your schools look pretty different. You do? Not today, John, tomorrow. And their lands may be different from yours. If you go outside, is that what this looks like here? This is not what South Carolina looks like for sure. But we're still part of God's family. And we're part of God's family with the people who live there. Their lives may be different from yours. And their words may be very different from yours. Do you know people who speak another language in your school? Can you tell me the name of another language that people might speak in your school? What's a nut, Margo? What's a language that? Spanish. Spanish? Okay, is there another Spanish person, speaking person? But inside, even though we all look different, even here, we don't all look the same. You guys all look very different. Inside, everybody's hearts are just like yours. Put your hand on your heart. Can you feel it beating? It's just like the people who are sitting in front of you and behind you. Their hearts beat just like that. 
whoever they are, wherever they are, all over the world. So that's something we're thinking about today, how God made so many different people who live in different places and they do different things, but God is the big mom of all of us and God gave moms here their jobs and wants them to do their very best even though some days we don't get it right. And so we forgive each other and say we're sorry. All right, let's put our hands together. We're going to say a prayer before you leave. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for being the best mom and showing our moms how to do their job. Help us to be good friends and brothers and sisters with everyone in the world. Amen. Have a great day today. Our next scripture readings come from two different parts of the Bible. Often when we read different passages, you will hear things that echo other parts of the Bible. So listen as the Spirit speaks, but the words of God echo one another throughout all of these passages. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will send another companion, who will be with you forever. This companion is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world can't receive because it neither sees nor knows who God is. But you know God, because God lives with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live. You live too. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by me and my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. And now this reading from 1 Peter. Who will harm you if you are zealous for for good? But happy are you even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by those. Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Yet do this with respectful humility, maintaining a good conscience. Act in this way so that those who malign your good lifestyle in Christ may be ashamed when they slander you. It is better to suffer for doing good if this could possibly be God's will, than it is for doing evil. Christ himself suffered on account of our sins, once and for all, the righteousness of one on behalf of unrighteousness. He did this in order to bring you into the presence of God. Christ was put to death as a human, but made alive by the Spirit. And it was by the Spirit that Christ went to preach to the spirits in prison. In the past, these spirits were disobedient when God patiently waited during the time of Noah. And Noah built an ark in which a few, that is eight lives, were rescued through water. Baptism is like that. It saves us now. Not because it removes dirt from your body, but because it is the mark of a good conscience toward God. Your salvation comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is at God's right side. Now that he has gone into heaven, he rules over the angels, authorities, and powers. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. 
Like I said, today we will talk about visible symbols and audible echoes of God. St. Augustine once said that the sacraments are visible symbols of invisible grace, to which I think is just absolute rubbish theology. And one's not supposed to agree with some of the, like, huge patriarchs of church, like Augustine. And here's why I think it's rubbish. I don't believe that God should ever be invisible in the world. It is not our call to simply accept the idea that God cannot be visible, because it's not true to Scripture. Instead, Scripture will talk time and again about the ways in which we are called to make God visible in the world. When people say, I just don't see God, I don't see Jesus, I wonder if it's because we accept this weird myth that God must be invisible. In the beginning, way back in the beginning, people are created. In what image are they created? They are created in the image of God. So if you can't see God, you're just not looking around you at the people who are there. And you may say, okay, well, it's easy to see people or the image of God in people who are loved and lovely, people who are kind and gentle and good to me. But that's not God. That's just you seeing what you like in other people and naming it as God. The challenge I think that we are given is to see God visible in everyone, everywhere. Now, I will say this is a line of theology that got me in a bit of hot water with my committee on ministry because they were of the belief that one had to be baptized, to have the Spirit in them, to be able to be called a child of God. They restricted this view of what it was to be God's child, a reflection of that image, until we had done something as people. Now, I argued constantly with them that that was not a good interpretation of scriptures, that God's image is born in each and every one of us, and if we can't see it, that's not God's fault. It's our problem to fix. One of the most beautiful things we have done as part of this 50th anniversary celebration is to make the quilt that is behind me. It is also reflected or echoed in the stole that I am wearing now. And what I love about this symbol is it is a visible symbol of a God who might be hidden otherwise. You see, the congregation, each and every one of you, people who are part of God's family, took time to think about what piece, what piece of things that I don't understand, but they are also really lovely. But my ignorance does not make something else ugly. It's just my ignorance. So somebody who is deeply connected to a team that represents a family or a community may have chosen a sport pattern, and that represents something beautiful for them. Somebody whose last name happens to be Fisher may have picked a pattern that included bubbles and fish because it echoed their last name you will see that those houses beautifully get to exist by one another. There's something really beautiful about a quilt that is not made by ignorant me, but by the wisdom of the group. See, when I say, here's what God is, here's who God looks like, here's how you know God, then I need you to assure me that I am ignorant and giving you an idol. Because there is no one person in this world who can walk through the world and say, here is who God is. Here is the fullness of what God looks like. Here is how love is limited. Because every limitation, every image is nothing more than an abomination because it is the limitation. I think our children often mirror 
phrases that we say a lot, especially when they're very little. Um, and so when we were in New York, uh, Huck was about two years old, and we were having some conversation, and he was, he was fairly precocious as a two-year-old. And one of our neighbors was saying something to Huck, and Huck just looked at him, and he goes, that's ignorant. <laughs> and the neighbor looked at our two-year-old kid, and they said, what? And Huck was like, that's ignorant. That is not what that is. And the person said, um, OK. And then we delighted in watching a two-year-old explain to an adult how they were wrong and what they were actually wrong about. And this was something to do with dinosaurs, if I remember correctly. I believe somebody had misidentified a stegosaurus or a spinosaurus as a stegosaurus or something. And Huck informed them about how they were wrong and ignorant. And it became this beautiful teaching moment that rarely happens because when you say that's ignorant to somebody, and usually they get kind of defensive and they back away or they like wall up and they say like, who are you to tell me what I don't know? I think that phrase, that's ignorant, which I say more often than I probably ought to, maybe is a brilliant invitation towards repentance. Often somebody will do something in a way that I think is so ignorant. I'm sure you encountered this on your way here to church. I guarantee there was a choice that a different person on the road made that you were like, ignorant. <laughs> that was not a full two second stop at that stop sign, friend. You rolled right on through. You did not use your turn signal properly. Whatever. People do things that are ignorant all the time. They simply do not know. Ignorance is an invitation toward learning. And what's brilliant about this scripture passage today, this idea that Paul is going to go to Rome and tell an entire community that they're ignorant, this is crazy and brilliant. Because here's the deal. Rome was the intellectual capital of the world, at least from the perspective of the people who were going to be reading this text when it was written. Rome housed all of the best thinkers, all of the best philosophers, all of the best mathematicians, all of the best medical practitioners. Anybody who was anybody would go to Rome and hang out with really famous people to debate and show how wise they were. Paul has the audacity to go to this city, to wander through, and to talk to the people there about um, agnosis and ignorance, to say, this is what you do not know. In fact, Paul, even in his wandering through this city, finds a statue that says, to an unknown God. And he says, I know who this God is because we too worship a God who is both known and unknown. This God created all people and all people reflect that image. And to know this God is to see the things you don't know in other people and learn from them. Paul does not say, get rid of all that you don't know so that you might know everything, and that's where you meet God. Instead, Paul gives this great invitation to embrace the unknown with curiosity and love. Paul says, repent, that your heart might be changed so that your mind might be changed. Paul does not say, go and make sure every house has bubbles and fish, because that would be a really ugly quilt. And that's not what we have. Instead, Paul says, go and embrace this beautiful unknown with repentance that leads to glory. In mere moments, we are going to baptize two people in our church. We will place water on their head, and we will see God present in a different way than we see God present now. 
that sacrament is a visible symbol of what I argue will be a visible God present with us. If you don't see, look harder. And if you don't see, stop looking with your eyes because they deceive you, but look with the Spirit and you will see God. If you don't hear, stop listening and open your ears that you might experience God in the echoes. When Jesus speaks to the disciples and tells them they will not be left alone, he promises the gift of the Spirit. The gift that we might see, know, hear, and experience God, not in the life to come, but in the world now. We are called to be builders, not of our own house like that's where God lives, but of a community like this quilt where we see it is in the difference that we see God. There is too much sameness in this world and not enough curiosity or repentance or people saying, I actually am really ignorant. Today is Mother's Day, and sometimes people will say, oh, that person is somebody only a mother could love. What a beautiful invitation to expand your mind, if ever you think that, because that's true. Only a mother of God's great love can find love for each child. And if you say, if you dare say, only a mother could love that person, you are simply saying, I do not know enough about God to see love in that person. Let your ignorance be an invitation to repentance like people who are thirsty for those living waters. Let all who thirst come and see and say, instead of just being like, oh, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. Instead of saying, I'm ignorant, I'm ignorant, I'm ignorant. Turn and drink from the baptismal font the waters that do not leave you parched. See ignorance as an invitation for you to be curious and see where God is in those places that are struggles. That is the message Paul brings to say, look, you have a statue to an unknown God. Look around you and you will see God visible everywhere. Let the quilt, your mind, your body, all be invitations towards this reminder. Ignorance is not really bliss. It is an invitation an invitation towards curiosity and love that we might repent and thirst no more as we drink from the living waters of God, which never ceased, but invite us to see each and every person as a reflection of God. So let us continue to build God's house as we thirst for the things that leave us with a greater world of peace and love and joy. Together, let us continue to worship God.
you step up that way? There you go. There you go. There you go. So this morning, it is my pleasure to introduce to you, if you haven't met them before in worship, Eric and Leslie Robinson. Leslie is the child of Walter and Mary Margaret Burgess. Now, Walter has been excited about this day for weeks and longer, but unfortunately, yesterday he was placed in the hospital. So Walter is joining us with another church member. They're having church in the hospital together this morning while we are here, and I trust that you will um, feel Walter's spirit answering the questions and participating fully as he would be if he were in the room with us. Leslie and Eric, along with their children, Rowan and Emma Reese, they live in Colorado, and uh, Leslie practiced medicine there. They attend worship there, but they don't have a church that's really their home church, so they've returned to St. Giles to a place that's home for the family where their children could be baptized. Um, because Leslie and Eric don't worship with us every week, and many of you don't know them, Walter and Mary Margaret are here standing up in a dual role today. They're here as our church members making promises to Rowan and Emma Reese, but they're also standing with Rowan and Emma Reese making promises about who they will be. <laughs> Hear these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, and just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is Lord of all, who is above all and through all and in all. In baptism, God claims us and puts a sign on us to show that we belong to God. God unites us with Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. On behalf of the session, I present Emma Reese and Rowan Robinson to receive the sacrament of baptism. Do you all want your children to be baptized today? <laughs> Leslie and Eric, through the, through the uh, baptism, we enter a covenant with, that God has established. Within that covenant, we are given new life and guarded from evil, nurtured by the love of God and God's people. We embrace that covenant. We turn from evil and turn toward Jesus Christ. Walter and Mary Margaret, Eric and Leslie, you are invited to profess your faith in Christ on behalf of Emerys and Rowan to confess the faith of the church and the faith in which we baptize. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from, your way, or from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Who is your Lord and Savior? And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? This sacrament lays solemn obligations upon you, the people of God. Will you be faithful to your calling as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, so that Emma Reese and Rowan and all other children in our St. Giles family may grow in the knowledge and love of Christ. If so, will you please stand? Now, with the whole church and on behalf of these children, let us state what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. 
In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. So we thank you, God, for this water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From these waters, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through these waters, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise Emma Reese and Rowan to new life and embrace them into the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them that they may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Do you want to go first? You want to go first? You can stay here. (laughs) Come on. What is this child's name? Rowan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May you know God's love forever. All right, come here, Emma. And what is her name? Emma Reese, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May you know God's love forever. Now come and take a walk with me. We talked about this, didn't we? Come hold my hand, come this way. I'm going to introduce you to everybody that's here, part of your church family. That all of these people, well, a lot of them, have been baptized. And some of them remember, but some of them don't. And so when they see the water running down your hair and on your clothes, they imagine what it would feel like if they were getting wet today. They imagine some of the people who would sit in the congregation and love them and teach them, just as these people will do for you today. Some of the people here today were actually baptized right here, just like you guys were. But some of the people here today were not baptized here. They might have been baptized in a different church, in a different state. Somebody here might have even been baptized in Colorado. Somebody here was baptized in Idaho, at least one person. (laughs) Some people here may have been baptized in a Presbyterian church. They may have been in a Methodist church. They may be even in a Roman Catholic church. But we know, just like we read in that story earlier with the cool pictures, that all of us are part of God's family, no matter how different we are, that God loves all of us, and God wants all of us to be part of family and to take care of each other, even when we're different, even if we don't like each other. So in this church, When we baptize people, we remember that it's our job to take care of each other. It's our job to go and sit with your grandfather in the hospital today. It's our job to teach Sunday school and volunteer in the nursery, just like we need every week. It's our job to change the light bulbs in this building so people can see when they're going when they're here. And this is something that we enjoy doing our job here at church you guys did a great job walking around. Thank you so much. Emma Reese and Rowan Robinson have been received into the Holy Catholic Church. Through baptism, God has made them members of the household of God to share with us in the priesthood of Christ. I charge you, the people of this congregation, to nurture and love these children and their family, to continually share the good news of the gospel with them and all of God's children, and to help them know and follow Jesus Christ. We're really glad you guys came home to St. Giles for this. And Walter, we love you and miss you. And I promise we're going to take good care of these kids for you. (laughs) Welcome to St. Giles.
Each day when we come to worship, we bring our joys and concerns, and it's our job as family members to pray with one another and to pray for one another. When somebody doesn't have the words to pray, you may be able to step in and pray on their behalf. Um, This morning, of course, we want to remember Walter, who's in the hospital and undergoing some tests and procedures and pray for his heart's health and strength. We give thanks that Emily Pittman has safely returned home after being in the hospital in Maine for about a month. She came home this week, so we pray for her, the long recovery that's ahead for her. And um, we pray for Matt, who had a procedure recently, and pray for his continued strength and healing. Let us lift up our hearts together to God in prayer. God, you are so good and making this creative, wild, diverse family. We give thanks for the diversity that we see and feel within St. Giles, for people with different color hair and different color skin and different interests. We're glad that we have a safe place to practice being your family. And we pray, too, for people who are not in this part of the St. Giles family, but are in the larger family of your church around the world. For people who are wildly different from who we are, who say different things and think different things, who eat different things and love and live in different ways. Help us to better understand the goodness of your creation, the goodness that you intend, and the small, simple, and practical ways that we can live and love and care for each other every day. We pray for those we know who have cared for us, those who have acted as mothers and parents in our lives, for those who have healed us, cared for us, made soup for us when we were sick, held our hands when we've been scared. And we pray for the times that our mothers have not loved perfectly. We ask that there would be space for healing and forgiveness. We pray for friends today who are sick and in need of your mothering and healing care. We pray for Walter and Emily and Matt, that they might all find strength today and compassion and patience for the journey to health. We pray for others whom we each bring before you now in the silence of our hearts, others who are near the end of their lives, others who have received a new diagnosis, others who are struggling with the burden of mental health. And we pray for ourselves, we, your humble children, who want to do our best, who some days do a great job making you proud, and some days must try your last nerve. We are sorry for the mistakes we made, for the mistakes we make, and pray for your grace to guide us through each moment of the day living here in this good world that you have given us. Bind all of our prayers together with the one prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
One way that we can give God praise and thanks is to share from the abundance of gifts God has already given us. So whether you are leaving a gift in the offering plate today or thinking of the gifts you'll be sharing later this week, we invite you all to touch the plate as it goes past you and think of how you can steward God's good creation today and every day. Thank you, God, for the gifts that you give, for the world with all its diversity, for the many ways you are expressed in the people around us. For we are created in your image, bear your image, and share your light. Let our gifts be a reflection of your gifts and glory as we seek to make you visible in the world with everything we do. 
continue to empower the church to build your kingdom in this time, in this place, forever. Amen. What does the Lord require of us? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Your challenge is the charge, and that is the work that still needs to be done. The charge today is to make Christ visible. Sacraments are a beautiful gift, a visible sign of God who we are called to make visible. When you encounter things that are different, that you might label as ignorant, let that be an invitation to confront your own ignorance, to see God in others, and to embrace the diversity of creation so that we might be the builders of the kingdom. Go now into the world, for God created you and your sisters and brothers. Christ redeemed you and called you to see that light in others. And the Spirit empowers you and gives you all you need to see God manifest each and every place you go. Go in peace, in hope, and above all else in love, this day evermore. Amen. Amen.